Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For He has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us Himself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Let us also ask Him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. Lord have mercy. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Lord have mercy. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, the lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace with your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men, the rising up of enemies hidden and manifest. Take them away from us and from all your people, from this holy table, from this holy church, and from this holy place that is yours. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to trade on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemies.
their servants, the ministers of this day, the archdeacon, all the deacons, and the clergy, and all the people, and my weakness be absolved from the mouth of all Holy Trinity, the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit, and from the mouth of the one only Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, and from the mouth of the twelve apostles, and from the mouth of the beholder of God, the evangelist, St. Mark, the holy apostle and martyr, the patriarch, St. Severus, our teacher, Dioscorus, and Athanasius, the apostolic, St. Peter, the holy martyr and high priest, St. John Chrysostom, St. Cyril, St. Basil, and St. Gregory, and from the mouth of the 318 assembly, and I say the 150 Constantinople and the 200 at Ephesus, and from the mouth of our honored father, the high priest, Paul Autodros II, and his partner in the liturgy, our honored father, the Metropolitan and the Serapion, and from my own mouth, being the least, for blessed and full of glory is your holy name, Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now and all times, to the ages of all ages. Amen. Yeah. 
Paul, the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, was separated into the gospel of God, a chapter from his epistle to the Romans, may his blessings be with us all, amen. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his, through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name, among whom you are also the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at, la now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you, both of you and me. Now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you, just as, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to, the bar and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For it is in the righteousness of God, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The grace of God the Father be with you all. Amen. A reading from the epistle of our Father, James, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he will pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass. Its flowers fall, its flowers falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or, sh or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Do not love the world, nor the things which are in the world. The world shall pass away in its desires, but he who does the will of God shall abide forever. Amen. <laughs> Oh. 
of our fathers, the pure apostles, who are invested with the grace of the Holy Spirit, and may their blessings be upon us all. Amen. Amen. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive, after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. The word of the Lord shall grow, multiply, be mighty, and be confirmed in the Holy Church of God. Amen. Today, the third day of the blessed month of Kiyat, may God begin it in goodness and renew it for us in peace and tranquility, while our sins and our iniquities are forgiven through the tender mercies of our Lord, my fathers, and my brethren. Amen. On this day, we commemorate the entrance of Our Lady, the Virgin, Saint Mary, and the Theotokos, the Mother of God, into the temple, when she was three years old, for she was a Nazarite to God. Her mother, Hannah, or Hannah, was childless. She was exceedingly sad, and so her was her husband, Saint Joachim. She prayed to God fervently and made a vow and said, O oh my God, if you give me a fruit, I will give to your holy temple. God answered her prayers and gave her 
this blessed fruit, and she called her Mary. After she reared her for three years, she took her to live with the virgins in the temple of the Lord, St. Mary, growing in virtue and piety in the fullness of time. When the Lord was to come to the world, he was incarnate from this pure virgin whom he chose. May the blessing and intercession of St. Mary be with us all. Amen. On this day also of the year 1229 of the martyrs, 1512 A.D., St. Gustavus Salib, the new martyr, was martyred. The saint was born in the city of Ifshadat, which was nearby the city of Or, district of Malawi, and was called Salib. He learned the church subjects, and when he became a young man, he desired to live a life of virginity. Nevertheless, his parents would him against his will to one of his relatives. He found that his wife had the same inclination to the life of celibacy. So they agreed to live together under one roof in a complete virginity. St. Salib or Bustavros <clears throat> spent most of his time with the monks in the nearby monastery listening to their advi advices, preserving on praying, interceding by the Virgin to aid him in his spiritual struggle. One day, a group of wicked men falsified many untrue accusations against him that he blasphemed against the Islamic faith. However, he openly declared his faith in the Lord the Christ, so they imprisoned him. The wife of the jailer saw him from the prison's window praying all night long. She also saw a luminous woman appeared before him and said, Be patient, for you shall receive the crown of martyrdom and the archangel Michael will support you. The ruler of the area later on sent him to Cairo shackled with chains. He was on the boat for a few days without food or drink, preserving and praying, and, and the Virgin St. Mary appeared to strengthen him. When he arrived to Cairo, they brought him before the king, Al Ashraf Konsoa Al Ghuri, and the saint confessed the Lord the Christ against, again before him. He was enraged and sent him to the judge to pass a sentence against him. When the judge realized his instance and courageously confessing the Lord the Christ, he sent he sentenced to put him to death and delegated that to one of the Mamluk princes. They made a wooden cross and nailed Saint Bustavros or Saint Salib on it, then raised him crucified on the back of a camel and paraded him around the streets of Cairo. He rejoiced for he was counted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Christ. Later on, they took him off the camel and promised to release him if he forsook his confession of the Lord the Christ. However, the saint shouted, saying, I will die a Christian on the name of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. The prince ordered to behead him, thus he received the crown of martyrdom. His body remained for three days in the middle of the fire they prepared. However, his body did not burn. Some of the believers came and took his pure body and brought it to the papal residency. Pope Ioannis re received him with great veneration in the antiquated church of the Virgin Mary in Harid Zuela in Old Cairo and kept it there. During the papacy of Pope Shenouda III, the 117th Patriarch, he permitted the Bishop of Malawi, Amba Dimitrios, to relocate a part of the relics of St. Gustavros to the church of St. Virgin, Virgin St. Mary in the city of Ipshadat, and that was on the 15th of Bauna, 1703 after martyrdom 1987 AD. May the blessing of Saint Bustavros and may the prayers of all the saints be with us all and glory be to our God forever. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, our God, who sit as holy, honor apostles, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, to hear the things which you and have not heard them. But as we all blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear, may we be worthy to hear and act according to your holy gospel through the prayers of your saints. Pray for the holy gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also our Master, those who have bidden us to remember them in our supplications and prayers, which we offer up unto you, O Lord, our God. Those who have already fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection of us all. Stand in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to our teachers and Luke the Evangelist. May his blessing be with us all. From the song of our teacher David the prophet, may his blessing be with us all. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her, for the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, our Lord, God, Savior, and the King of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, to whom is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Inasmuch as many have taken in a hand to sit in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, Jesus, as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, they never them to us. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent Theophilus, 
that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abia. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord blameless. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both when advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his not thing to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and when Zacharias, Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn away of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day of these things take place, because you do not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he injured so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they rejoiced that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he belonged to them and remained speechless. And so it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among people. Glory be to God forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing great. Uh, today we're starting the first Sunday of the blessed month of Kiyak. The month of Kiyak started on Friday. Last night was the first Sabah Arba. We know that uh, during the month of Kiyak we have four Sabah Arba, seven and four the praises. Uh, thank God we were blessed with His Eminence Amba Serapin and His Grace Bishop Suriel last night. Uh, hopefully you can make it the next three days, everyone. So we start the uh, Ashaya on Saturday. We start at seven, and we start the praises of seven and four Sabar Ba right after the, the vespers, until we end about midnight. So that goes the whole thing goes from seven to almost midnight, 
And that's what we did yesterday, inshallah, next Saturday, and the two other Saturdays after. I hope everyone can make it. So that's every Saturday from 7 to midnight. The liturgies will be the same. We have a liturgy every day except Monday and Thursday. So we have a liturgy on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. That's all, 8 o'clock a.m. And then on Sunday, we have two liturgies, one at 7 and one in English at 9. Um, I'm very sure you all know, thank God, Mabruk, we have a new carpet in the church. And uh, we request um, as, as long as we can uh, to keep it as clean as is. Uh, the, the last carpet we had, it, it lasted for about 15, 16 years. That's, that's great. Hopefully that one can stay longer. So we're asking everyone to please, uh, we shouldn't announce this, but I'll announce it anyway. We should not bring any food or drink inside the church. Even if you have children, if you want to feed them, take them outside, feed them. Even if you have babies, um, either um, feed them outside and bring them in, or if you have a stroller. But please do not have anything on the carpet. It, it costs a lot to, uh, to bring the material and to install it. Uh, those things now are not cheap. And this is your house. This is everyone's house. So uh, as the same, you keep your house uh, clean. Please keep the carpet uh, clean. Uh, I'm very sure this is very simple request. Uh, we should be able to do it. Uh, we should not be even announcing it because we should not be eating or drinking inside the church anyway. But we'll announce it anyway. Um, I noticed one thing when the gospel was read that many people who came, they went in the church. So please, when you come during the gospel, we should not be moving at all during the reading of the gospel. Even if you came and you're at the door, we wait at the door until the gospel is, is, is finished, and then we walk in. So don't walk in during the reading of the gospel. Okay? We said this before, but I will say it again. I know maybe sometimes we don't, we don't realize, but we can go in during any reading. But for the gospel, because this is the word of God, everyone should be stand still and listen to the word of God. We should not be walking inside the church. So if you come during the gospel, hopefully you come earlier, but if you come during the gospel reading, please wait until um, the reading is done and then you can walk in. Last thing, there's an open house for junior high boys today in the coffee shop. So the parents for the junior high uh, gentlemen, please, after the liturgy, the servants would like to meet with you in the coffee shop. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I'll make it very quick for the sake of the time. And let me remind you, uh, during the month of Kiyak, we have four Gospels from one chapter. Those four Gospels are from chapter one of the Gospel of St. Luke, all of them. So today we started the first section. The first section, which is the first Saturday today, we'll talk about the Annunciation for the birth of St. John the Baptist. You heard about Zechariah who was offering incense and then the angel appeared to him and told him that your wife will have a son. He did not believe and then because he did not believe he became mute until Saint Elizabeth uh, bore a son and that son was Saint John the Baptist. So today was the Annunciation of Saint John the Baptist. Next time will be the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Saint, uh, the Archangel Gabriel also will appear to Saint Mary and announce the birth of Christ. Third week will be the visit of Saint Mary to Saint Elizabeth. And then the fourth week will be the birth of Saint John the Baptist. Those are the four weeks of Kiak. Four Sundays of Kiak, four sections, four stories are from the same chapter, chapter one in the Gospel of Saint Luke. The Annunciation for the birth of St. John, the Annunciation for the birth of our Lord Jesus, the visit of St. Mary to Elizabeth, and then the birth of St. John the Baptist. And of course, on the 29th of Kiak, we celebrate the marvelous, the miraculous birth of our Lord Jesus Christ from St. Mary. This whole thing talks about the Incarnation. And the Incarnation reminds us of one thing and that we should all focus on, which is the love of God to humanity. God loves humans, God loves his creation, and that's why he sent his only begotten son to save us. So when we hear all these stories, the one thing that we need to focus on is the love of God. God loves us. 
God loves us, he came down and took our form and he took our humanity and he became man to save man. And one of the things uh, that we say in the Tazbihah that summarizes the, the whole incarnation goal when we say he took what belongs to us, he gave us what belongs to him. He gave us what belongs to him and he took what, so what belongs to us is the humanity. And he gave us what belongs to him, which is holiness, righteousness. Today, we read about Saint Zechariah and Saint Elizabeth, how they were both righteous in the eyes of the Lord. So one of the things that we can all benefit from the incarnation, because that was the goal of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the reasons why he came in a human being form is to give us a perfect model to follow. So when we hear about the incarnation, one of the things that we hear, or what, that's one of the things that we concentrate on and focus on is the love of God. And the other thing is, how do I become the image of Christ? The whole goal of the incarnation for every one of us to be the image of Christ. To be holy. And that's what he gave us. He gave us holiness. He gave us righteousness. He gave us salvation. He gave us purity. He gave us everything that we need to be heavenly. So he gave us this heavenly nature that we can live with on earth. That's what incarnation is. It's not that complicated. Sometimes people make the incarnation complicated, but it's not. He came, he took what belongs to us, and he gave us what belongs to him. Okay, say this always in your mind. This is what incarnation is. Okay, there's a lot of course, there's a lot of theology and a lot of dogma in it. But that's what I need to benefit. I need to know that God loves me. And that's why he came in a human form. And by the way, in Christianity, is the only religion when you see our beloved God coming to his children. In any other religion, you would see the, the, the people are trying to make it up to whomever they are worshiping. But in Christianity, God came to us. God came to our world. God took our nature. God took our form to save us. Why? Because he loves us. What do I do? I need to be like him. Very simple. So God loves us. That's why he came to our earth, took our form because he loves us. What do I need to do? I need to be like him. Simple, easier said than done, of course. It's not easy. Because that's what Satan is trying to do, to put obstacles and hindrances for us to reach that image. He does not want us to reach that image because once we reach that image, we are going to heaven. When we say, let us all become like our Lord Jesus Christ, it's a, it's a very uh, simple sentence that I, I see a lot in a wristband sometimes. Uh, it says WWJD, and that's what incarnation is what would Jesus do? I need to be that image. So every time before you start watching something, ask yourself, what would Jesus, would he watch this? Before you listen to anything, ask yourself, would he listen to this? Before you go to any place, ask yourself, would he go to that place? Before you get involved in any relationship, ask yourself, would he get involved in that relationship? And so on and so forth. That's why one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons he came on earth is for us to look up to that perfect image and be like him. None of us, of course, would be perfect, but we struggle and we try our best to reach that perfection. And actually, this is what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mountain. He said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So again, incarnation, our Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth came from his throne, came from his universe, came from his comfort zone to our earth to save us because he loves us. What do I do? I need to be like him. What would Jesus do? Have that in mind in every step of the way. And always keep that sentence that we say in the praise in your mind. He gave us what belongs to him or, and he took what belongs to us. So he took humanity and gave us his uh, holiness and his purity.
Last point is one of the things also that we can do today, we read about this beautiful family. The beautiful family of St. Zacharias, St. Elizabeth, and St. John the Baptist. And they were all righteous in the sight of the Lord. How do I have a holy house? How do I hold, I have a holy family? It's a whole different topic. But one of the things that uh, we can focus on, if I want to worship God, then I need to remove all other idols in my house or in my life. I want my house as a father or as a mother, as, as children and siblings, we want our house to be like the house of St. Zacharias and St. Elizabeth. Many things that we can say, but let us focus on this. Let us all remove all idols, all other idols that we have in that house. Meaning, and of course you'll tell me we don't have any idols in the house, we don't have any carved idols, and that's not what I'm talking about. We're talking about idols like money, for example. Are we moving everything in the house towards materialistic goal, to be rich and to worship money? That's an idol. Are we moving the whole house to be socially active all the time and to be famous and to be known among the community? Are we moving the whole house toward success academically only, not even having time to pray and read the Bible? Those are idols. Money is not bad, being socially active is not bad, being successful academically is not bad, but when it becomes an idol, and this is what I live for, that is very bad. Then I cannot say I worship God, because in actuality, I'm a Christian by name, but I'm actually worshiping another idol in my life. So if I want to be a holy family, and my house is a holy house, like this house of Zacharias and Elizabeth, then I need to remove all the idols. Another idol could be a sin that I am addicted to, a bad habit that I do. That's an idol that I worship, and I cannot be detached from it. Why? Because I'm so obsessed with it. It controls me, it chains me. And I'm not saying this is easy. It, it takes time and it takes efforts. But this is what we need to do, and this is what God wants us to do, and that, for that reason, He came and took what belongs to us to give us what belongs to Him, purity, righteousness. How do I become the, in, righteous in the, in the eyes of the Lord like Zacharias and Elizabeth? How? I cannot do that if I don't start removing those idols. I'm not saying removing idols is, is very easy. Actually, it's very hard. But I, I have to start trying to remove those. I have to realize the idols that I have in my life. And then I start removing them. That way I can worship God and I can only worship only God, not anything else. <clears throat> so the first point was incarnation means God's love to us, to humans. Two, he gave us what belongs to him and took what belongs to us. He gave us his holiness, purity, and he took our humanity. He came to us. Why? Because he loves us. What do I do? Always ask yourself, what would Jesus do? He came to give us that image. And let us all try. I'm not saying this is easy, but let us all try to be that image, to ask yourself that question before every step on the way. What would Jesus do? And the third and last point was how to have a holy house, a house like Zacharias's and Elizabeth is by many things, but we focus today on removing idols. Anything that we are attached to, we need to remove them, so that way we only worship God and no one and nothing but God. May our Lord Jesus Christ give us this life, the, the righteous life that Zacharias and Elizabeth have, and St. John the Baptist will come later on, the third week, but let us all try to realize that love of God, let us try to receive what he's trying to give us, the perfection, the divine nature, and to give us the, the holiness, the purity, and let us all try to keep our houses holy and pure, so may God be always with us, and glory be to our God forever, amen. <laughs> Che che
Satan, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, truly. God, the Father of Pantocrator, Creator of heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one as with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us sank for our salvation. which enter into the world through the envy of the devil have destroyed by the life-giving manifestation of your only begotten Son, our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have filled the earth with heavenly peace by which the host of angels glorify you, saying, Glory to God and the highest peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Pray for perfect peace, love, and the holy apostolic greeting. Lord, According to your good will, O God, fill our hearts with your peace. Cleanse us from all blemish, all guile, all hypocrisy, all craftiness, and the remembrance of vice bearing death. And make us all worthy, our Master, to greet one another with the holy kiss, that without casting us into condemnation, we may partake of your immortal and heavenly gift. Chempe Christos, Jesus ben choice. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Yea, Lord who art Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear us and have mercy upon us. Offer, offer, offer in order, stand with trembling, look towards the east, let us attend. Through the intercession of the Theotokos and Mary, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. We worship you, O Christ. Father and the Holy Spirit. 
For the ages are reigning forever, who dwells in the ice and looks upon the lowly, who have created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein, the Father of all Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom you have created all things visible and invisible, who is seated upon the throne of his glory, and who is worshipped by all the holy powers. You who are seated stand before whom stand the angels, the archangels, the principalities, the authorities, the thrones, the dominions, and the powers. Look toward the east. You are he around whom stand the cherubim full of eyes and the seraphim with six wings, praising continuously without ceasing, saying, Let us attend. created us and placed us in the paradise of joy. When we disobeyed your commandment by the deceit of the serpent, we fell from eternal life and were exiled from the paradise of joy. You have not abandoned us to the end, but have always visited us, your holy prophets, and in the last days you manifested yourself to us who were sitting in darkness and the shadow of death. Through your only begotten Son, our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin Mary. Was incarnate and became man. And taught us the ways of salvation, he granted us the birth from on high through water and spirit. 
He made us unto himself and assembled people and sanctified us by your Holy Spirit. He loved his own who are in the world and has a ransom in our behalf, gave himself up unto death which reigned over us, whereby we were bound and sold in account of our sins. He descended into Hades through the cross. On the third day he ascended into the heavens and sat at your right hand, O Father. He has appointed a day for recompense on which he'll appear to judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to his deeds. He took bread into his holy hand, which are without spot or blemish, blessed and life giving. Even to God, his father and master of everyone, and when he had given thanks, Amen. he blessed it Amen. and he sanctified it. Disciple and say the apostle, saying, Take eat of it, all of you, for this is my body, which is broken for you and for many, to be given for the remission of sins. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup of the supper, he makes it of wine and water, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it, and he sanctified it. It is on all disciples and the apostles saying, Take drink of it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins. This do in remembrance of me. For every 
it, I am you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim my death, confess my resurrection, and remember me till I come. So commemorate his holy passion, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heavens. He is sitting at your right hand, O Father, and his second coming from the heavens. Awesome and full of glory, we offer unto you your gifts from what is yours, for everything concerning everything and in everything. Worship God in fear and trembling. We praise you, we bless you, we serve you, we worship you. Let us attend, amen. Oh, by oi kemen entem ai penso ma ef o eventan. Oh, The oneness of it, I ought in Tate is a thick and very entire. Our Lord, the God and Savior Jesus Christ, given for the remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of Him. Already our master to partake of your holy into the purification of our souls, our bodies, and our spirits, that we may become one body and one spirit, and may have a share and inheritance with all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your one only holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Lord, This which have acquired yourself with the precious blood of your Christ, keep her in peace with all the Orthodox bishops who are in her for most to remember, O Lord, our honor, Father, the Archbishop, our Patriarch, our Tawadros the Second, and his partner in the liturgy, our honor, Father, the Metropolitan Ambassador. And those who rightly handle the word of truth with them, grant them unto your holy church to shepherd your flock in peace. Remember, O Lord, the Orthodox Hegemons, priests, and deacons. Lord, have mercy. And all the servants and all who are in virginity and the purity of all your faithful people. 
Remember, O Lord, to have mercy upon us all. Have mercy upon us, O God, the Father, the Son, the Christ. Remember, O Lord, the salvation of this your holy place and every place and every monastery of our Orthodox fathers. Lord, And those who dwell there in God's faith, graciously accord the Lord to bless the air of heaven, the fruits of the earth, the waters of the rivers, the seeds, the herbs, and the plants of the field this year. Lord, have mercy. Raise them to the measure according to your grace. Give joy to the face of the earth. May its forests be abundantly watered and its fruits be plentiful. Prepare it for sowing and harvesting. Manage, O Lord, our life as the infant. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness for the sake of the poor, of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us who entreat you and seek your holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness, that we too having sufficiency in everything always may abound in every good deed. Remember, O Lord, those who have brought unto you these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been brought, and those by whom they have been brought. Give them all the heavenly reward. Pray for these holy precious gifts, our sacrifice, and those who bring them. This, O Lord, at the command of your only begotten Son, that we share in the commemoration of your saints, a graciously accord the Lord to remember all the saints who have pleased you since the beginning, our holy fathers, the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles, the preachers, the evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the spirits of the righteous perfected in the uh, faith. Most of all, the pure, full of glory, ever virgin, holy Theotokos, and Mary, who truly gave birth to God the Logos, and Saint John the Forerunner, Baptist, and Modern, Saint Stephen, and Shikin, and Proto Martyr, the Beholder of God, the Evangelist, Saint Mark, the Holy Apostle, and Martyr. The Patriarchs and Severus, our teacher, Dioscorus, and Athanasius, the Apostolic, Saint Peter, the Holy Martyr, and a High Priest, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Theodosius, Saint Theophilus, Saint Demetrius, Saint Cyril, Saint Basil, Saint Gregory, the Theologian, Saint Gregory, the Wonder Worker, Saint Gregory, the Armenian. The 318 assembled at Nicaea, the 150 Constantinople, and the 200 at Ephesus. Our righteous Father, the great of Antony, the righteous of Paul, the three saints of Macari, and all their children, the cross bearers. Our Father of John the Hegumen, our righteous Father of Pishoi, the perfect man. The beloved of our good Savior, and all the choir of your saints, through his prayers and supplications, have mercy upon us all and save us for the sake of your holy name. 
which is called upon us. Let those who read recite the names of our holy fathers, the patriarchs who have fallen asleep. O Lord, repose their souls and forgive us our sins. Remember, O Lord, your servants, Nasif, Sulaiman, Nehet, Farid, and all those, O Lord, whose souls you have taken, repose them in the paradise of joy, in the region of the living forever, in the heavenly Jerusalem, amen, the place. And we too, who are sojourners in this place, Keep us in your faith and grant us your peace until the end. souls and all things, your great name and holy glorified, blessed and exalted in everything, honored and blessed with Jesus Christ, your beloved Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Again. Let us give thanks to God the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he also has made us worthy now to stand in this holy place, to lift up our hands and to serve his holy name. Let us also ask him to make us worthy of the communion and partaking of his divine and immortal mysteries. The holy body. We worship you, our holy body. And the precious blood. And your precious blood. Of his Christ, the Pantocrator, the Lord, our God. Amen, amen, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Oh, my 
us, the Lord our God, the Creator, invisible, uncontainable, immutable, and immeasurable, who sent His true light, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the Eternal Logos. in the fatherly bosom at all times has come down and dwelt in the undefiled virginal womb. She, being a virgin, gave birth to him and her virginity is Praise him and the heavenly host chant to him, proclaiming and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your holy glory. Likewise, we to the weak and sinful make us worthy with them, O our good Master and lover of mankind, that with a pure heart we may praise you with him and the Holy Spirit, the coessential Holy Trinity, and raise our eyes toward you, O our Holy Father, who is in the heavens, and say, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. To Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. <laughs> Peace of your own holy Catholic and Apostolic Church of God. Remember, O Lord, our Father, that 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 our Father,
Remember, O Lord, our assemblies, bless them. Save the Amin. In the fear of God, let us attend. For the Holy, blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. One is the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit. The holy body and the precious true blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God, Amen. The holy precious body and the true blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God, Amen. The body and the blood of Emmanuel, our God, this is true. Amen. 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 I believe. I believe. I believe. And confess to the last breath that this is the life-giving flesh that your only begotten Son, our Lord, the God and Savior Jesus Christ, took from our Lady, the Lady of us all, the Holy Theotokos Saint Mary. He made it one with his divinity, without mingling, without confusion, without alteration. He confessed a good confession before Pontius Pilate. He gave it up for us upon the holy wood of the cross of his own will for us all. Truly I believe that his divinity parted not from his humanity for a single moment, nor a twinkling of an eye, given for us for salvation, remission of sins, and eternal life to those who partake of him. I believe, I believe, I believe that this is true. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I believe, I believe. Ah, ah, I believe that this is true. Pray for us and for all Christians who said to us concerning them, Remember us in the house of the Lord. The peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you. Sing Alleluia. Pray for the worthy partaking of the immaculate heavenly and holy mysteries. Lord have mercy.
I 
Glory and honor, honor and glory to all the whole Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. O the angel of this sacrifice, flying up to heaven with this hymn, remember us before the Lord that He may forgive us our sins. Let us all praise with the angel saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. Amen. Oh, no. 
thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now that of God the Father, the grace is only begotten Son, our Lord, the God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the gift, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may all go.